Live from Case at 12, the night beat starts right now. It is a spot the city of San Antonio has cleaned up time and time again. A steel fence now expected to enclose that spot underneath a bridge off of San Pedro Avenue. That area also a well-known spot for the homeless. The night team Stephen Cavazos with the changes city leaders are hoping to see and how people who live under the bridge will be affected. It's a spot that produces trash and problems for the city of San Antonio, but it's also a spot some of the city's homeless rest their head. It isn't going to be one. Uh, one thing that solves it. But District 1 Councilman Roberto Trevino says enclosing the area with a steel fence will help solve part of the problem. The fence is expected to cost a little more than $6,000, something Trevino says city leaders have budgeted for. But he says clearing the space will take some time. That's why it's not as easy as just picking something up and throwing it in the trash. Piles of trash, clothes, and other items can be seen underneath this bridge here on San Pedro. One man we spoke to says he understands why homeless people have come to the area. I'm a newly homeless person myself, and I, it doesn't surprise me. Jonathan Midel has been on the streets for almost a week. He believes people who come to camp under the bridge feel safe there. Some people are hiding things. Some people are hiding from things. Some people also don't like people. Bidel says he's been staying at Haven for Hope, but believes more needs to be done to get people off the streets. You don't have to live out here anymore. It's it's rough. Trevino says the city is taking those steps and people who live under the bridge will receive help. As these issues come up and they will in different parts of the city, know that the city is working on, on a comprehensive strategy. Now, Trevino says part of that strategy is utilizing resources within the city. He says the fence is just one part of what he calls a holistic approach that involves several other departments. That fence is expected to be constructed in the coming months. Tim, Courtney. Thank you, Stephen. New on the night beat now, a driver has been hospitalized after he hit a San Antonio Police Department squad car while its flashing lights were on. It happened when the man was turning onto Callahan Road from Farragut Drive on the northwest side. The man told police he did not see the squad car because of a hill on Callahan. The man apparently hit his head on the windshield and was the only person in that vehicle. He was transported in serious condition. The police officer only suffered scratches and bruises. We're told his squad car's flashing lights and sirens were on because he was assisting another officer. The San Antonio Theater family lost their north side home to a fire last week, and that fire happened on Old Moss Road. Now that family crying out for help from the theater community. The night team's Jaffney Gray spoke with that mother's family who say they hope they can rebuild. One of our brothers called me and said, Mama's house burned down. And my immediate response was, what? Utter shock continues to overwhelm the Miller family. They believe the fire started either in the back of the home. Fire officials say a lightning strike destroyed their family home of 50 years last Saturday, displacing their 85-year-old mother, Marjorie Miller. Is having a hard time accepting that her home is gone. She, she, you know, she, uh... she hasn't been back. Thankfully, Miller made it out all by herself with only smoke inhalation. Even her dog, Lady, survived the early morning flames. However, what was once their theatrical and thriving home is gone. This is where we rehearsed a lot of our scripts, sheet music. Miller is a major part of the San Antonio theater community. With all five of her now adult children being a part of theater, she was heavily involved. She costumed numerous shows, I mean, for probably 40 years. It was a wall. Um, she had many production photos. Many in the community feel she is like family, which is why she is known as Mama Margie. She was always like a second mother to, to everyone, to our friends and our fellow castmates. Screenplays, a grand piano, costumes, all of it destroyed. Her children's mission is to rebuild for their mother. To renew just whatever we can for her because of what she did for all of us. Over all the years that we did things for the community and donated and, you know, helped out, we're just hoping to to reach out and ask for that help in return. Jaffany Gray, KSAT 12 News. Turning now to other of the day's top stories, an Amber Alert out of Austin still in effect right now. 12-year-old Avery Claire Reynolds was last seen leaving a middle school in southwest Austin just three days ago. That's according to Austin ISD police. She was wearing red framed glasses, a gray hoodie with the word small in black letters, black leggings and aqua colored Nike shoes. Austin authorities believe she is with her mother, Cassia Vaughn, who was reportedly in violation of a court order. 
Vaughn drives a black 2005 Mazda Tribute S with the Texas license plate number DTM3557. The car also has front end damage and a Texas Tech University sticker right next to the license plate. Anyone with information is asked to reach out to Austin police. A fight on the west side overnight uh, ends with a man being stabbed. Police were called out around 1230 this morning to Potosi Street over on the west side. Police say the stabbing happened at another location, though. Investigators say the two men got into a fight and the suspect allegedly stabbed the victim twice in the abdomen. The victim then went back to his own home and called police. He was then transported to University Hospital. At last check, he was in stable condition. A man's in critical condition tonight after being hit by a car. It was around 1.15 this morning when police say he was hit while trying to cross Fredericksburg Road and I-10. Police say the driver did not stop after the crash and it was another driver who later found the man on the roadway. He was then taken to the hospital and so far no arrests have been made in this case. A Converse fire station has reason to celebrate tonight after earning the first ever class one ISO designation in its region. ISO stands for Insurance Services Organization. They handle surveys and reviews of fire protection capabilities for municipalities. Converse now joins 57 other cities in Texas also holding that ranking. They're graded from one to 10 and uh, one being the best. And uh, it's a very significant step here today because uh, it's very historical. The uh, City of Commerce has gone from a volunteer fire department to uh, being the best in Texas. The classification is based on firefighter training, emergency response and dispatch, among other things. After being hit by a vehicle last year, San Marcos police officer Claudia Cormier will be stepping up to the plate to throw out the first pitch at the Texas Rangers game in April. Her life was forever changed after she was called out to a traffic incident on I-35. At the scene, an SUV hit her, which led to the loss of a leg, 20 surgeries, and more than 100 staples and stitches. The Rangers game will honor the Peace Officers Angels Foundation's Law Enforcement Appreciation Day. That's on Friday, April 10th at New Globe Life Field. A cold front moved through earlier today around midday, leaving in its wake some noticeably cooler air. Now, you may not really be feeling it yet, but you will momentarily, especially as we get into early tomorrow morning. So right now we're at 54 degrees. By midnight, already down into the mid-40s. Then early tomorrow morning, look at that, 6, 7 a.m., about 38 here in San Antonio, but even cooler in parts of the hill country. I'll break down those numbers in a moment. I do want to point out the aquifer did really respond nicely to the recent rainfall. It's up over half a foot. Now we're three feet above average. Mountain Cedars back. It's low at 60. Mold very high because of the recent rain at over 14,000. We'll talk about our next shot at rain, which actually looks like a decent chance coming up. Tim. Thank you, Adam. We'll see you in just a bit. Turning now to the upcoming impeachment trial of President Donald Trump, the White House making a statement tonight ahead of testimony this week. Plus, the new documents released that Democrats say shed light on the link between Lev Parnas and the president's personal attorney, ABC's Mona Kosa Abdi from our nation's capital. The White House on the attack ahead of the Senate trial. In a legal brief summarizing their case, House Democrats say the president, quote, abandoned his oath to faithfully execute the laws and betrayed public trust. President Trump thus warrants impeachment and trial, removal from office, and disqualification to hold and enjoy any office of honor, trust, or profit under the United States. Now the White House calling the articles of impeachment, quote, a dangerous attack on the right of the American people to freely choose their president and a brazen and unlawful attempt to overturn the results of the 2016 election. The House Judiciary Committee also releasing new documents showing frequent contact between an associate of Rudy Giuliani Lev Parnas and Derek Harvey, an aide to Congressman Devin Nunes. Nunes was the ranking Republican during last year's impeachment hearings and a vocal supporter of the president. Parnas, who's accused of violating campaign finance laws, told MSNBC Nunes was fully aware of the effort to push Ukraine to dig up dirt on the Bidens. It's scary because, you know, he was sitting there and making all these statements and all that when he, he knew very well that he knew what was going on. President Trump, in the meantime, adding former independent counsel Kenneth Starr and former Harvard Law professor Alan Dershowitz to his legal team ahead of the trial. I'm an advocate, not a witness, and I'm advocating against impeachment. Majority Leader Mitch McConnell has yet to detail rules for the trial, but the odds are stacked against the Democrats in the Senate. Republicans control more than half the seats, and unless four members of the GOP break ranks, there may not even be any additional witnesses. Monica Sarabdi, ABC News, Washington.